I recently had a problem where a tester told me that Zeta FTP server doesn't work on his Windows 10 home machine. Uh, it's working fine on this machine, but this machine has Windows 10 Pro. And we're suspecting that it's specific to Windows Home. Uh, now to make things more complicated, this is the only machine I have. I don't want to go out and buy a new machine just to test on Windows 10 Home and remote debugging is a real pain in the butt, especially with Windows 10 services. However, there is a solution. If you have Windows 10 Pro or higher, then it comes with Hyper-V, which is a virtualization system. It allows you to run other versions of Windows, or even Linux, in, on a virtual machine running on the same machine. So partially as a record for myself, just in case I need to refer to it, and also to help anybody else out. If you're in that situation, here's how you set it up. The first thing you're going to need is an image of the Windows 10 ins or, or whatever version of Windows you're using. You need an, an image of the installation DVD, uh, which Microsoft provides a tool to create. So you go to this page. I'll leave the details in, in, in the blog post. And here under Create Windows 10 Installation Media, you click Download the tool now, and you download it. OK, it's downloaded, so now we can run it. It takes a little bit of time to set up. So what we need to do is we need to create what's called an ISO image of the installation DVD. And we will then insert that image into the virtual machine's virtual DVD drive uh, to install Windows on it. So please be patient. OK, yes, you have to read and accept the license terms. Of course, it's finally ready. So we want to create installation media. Click Next. Uh, choose whatever settings you want here. I'm just using the recommend settings for this machine. And then you want to click on the ISO file, not the USB flash drive. The ISO file is the easiest option. The virtual machine has, as I said earlier, a virtual DVD drive. So click Next. Uh, choose a place to put it. You'll see I've already done that, but let's, let's continue on. OK, creating the ISO is going to take a while. So at this point, it's a good idea to get up off your de from your desk and just do something else. Get yourself a cup of coffee, maybe two. It actually takes a while. Um, so we'll skip through this, and I'll show you what to do afterward. Right, so let's start Hyper-V. Start menu, type in Hyper-V Hyper Manager. At this point, you should, as you can see, I've already created one, but I'll show you how to create one from scratch. So you right click and say New Virtual Machine. I suggest you skip the, don't, don't use the Quick Create. Uh, it's better off to go through all the steps. So I gave mine the name Windows 10 Home because that's what I plan to install on it. So just call it, give it something that lets you quickly know what it is. So this is number two. Um, I went with the generation two machine. I don't think this, it depends on what your, what your needs are, whether it matters if, which one you choose. Now assigning memory. I found the dynamic memory for this virtual machine uh, caused installation trouble. So I switched that off and I gave it two gigs of memory. Uh, exact, the exact amount, again, is up to you. And, and what your needs are. Uh, bear in mind that you do need a machine. If, the more memory you assign your virtual machine, the more physical memory your machine's going to need to perform well. Uh, this one's got a lot of mem uh, memory in it, so I'm fine. Next, for networking, I would suggest using the default switch. Um, or if you don't need networking, have it disabled. I, I need networking. I need to be able to test the networking. So I've got that enabled. Create a, a virtual hard drive. 
Uh, I personally err on the smaller side unless I know I'm going to need a lot. I'll make this one about 50 gigabytes. And then say we're going to install from a bootable image file. And then you go and you select the ISO that you created. And then next and finish. And it'll create the virtual machine for you. And then at this point, you click on the, you select the virtual, new virtual machine, click connect. Oh, why is the window over there? Uh, start the machine. And then all going well, you should see, yeah, press a key. If you're too slow, then it says start PXE over IPv4. You might need to restart. I don't know why you have to be very quick with that. So let's reset the machine and quickly push a button. Now it's working correctly. And at this point, you're basically following the same installation that you would if you were installing Windows on a new machine. Uh, I'll skip showing you this, so that this is self-explanatory. Right, if you followed all the instructions, you should now have a virtual machine running whatever version of Windows or operating system you want to test your code under, uh, which is great. But you've got to get that code onto the machine first. Now, theoretically, with a Windows 10 virtual machine, you should be able to just copy and paste via remote desktop, but that didn't work for me. So instead, uh, you need to set up networking. So to set up network sharing, you just do it the same way on the virtual machine as you do on a real one. Choose a location. I'll, I'll use the downloads folder. Properties, sharing. And you'll see I've already shared it. Uh, normally you'd click on the, the share button. It'll set it up. You may need to set up the network sharing and the settings. You can see turn on file and printer sharing is already done here. Now, for some reason with this virtual machine, I had to restart the virtual machine before uh, the host machine would detect it. So let's see if that's the case. Let's try to access. Oh no, it looks like it's working this time. So now I can access the downloads folder and copy things across. And from there, test my code out on this, on Windows 10 Home and the virtual machine. Okay, one last quick test. Let's see if I can copy a file across. So just drag it across to the downloads folder. And you'll see here in the virtual machine, there it is. So now I can run it, install ZTFTP server and test it. And that is how it's done. I hope this video was useful to you. And now if you'll excuse me, I have some testing and debugging to do.